For this video, we're going to be discussing two tests that are used to differentiate laxity as well as intraarticular pathology at the femoral acetabular joint. The first that we're going to begin with is what's known as the log roll assessment. Now, the log roll assessment is a test for ligamentous laxity. It's very straightforward in terms of execution. However, there aren't great uh, defined psychometrics for this. And so you are going to have to engage in kind of another level of clinical reasoning to be able to extrapolate the findings from this test into your overall clinical picture. How it's performed is this. You're going to assess both sides and specifically what you're looking for is a degree of laxity in ER. And if ER, external rotation is greater, uh, or if they experience some anterior pain within the femoral acetabular joint, uh, compared to the uninvolved side, then we might say that that is positive for lax of your hypermobility. And so what you're going to do is you're going to roll the leg into internal rotation, and then you're going to roll the leg into external rotation. So imagine a log, you're rolling the leg in, and then you're rolling the leg out. What you're looking for is this degree of internal and external rotation ratio. What you do need to be aware of is making sure that you're not getting any rotation at the knee or the foot and ankle, but that you're really trying to be specific to that rotation occurring through the femur. Again, log roll, a test for ligamentous laxity. Now, when you're going into internal rotation, Keep in mind you're closing down the joint surfaces and if a labral tear is present on that acetabular surface, it's not uncommon for a patient to report a click or a catch or some type of reproduction of pain. So be cautious with that component, specifically uh, internal rotation, though it can occur in external rotation as the femoral head moves into that anterior portion of not only the acetabulum but also the capsule. The second test then that we're going to talk about is what's known as the resisted straight leg raise test, otherwise known as Stinchfield's test. Now, this is also a less specific test because a positive here could be a variety of things, okay? How this is going to be performed is you're gonna have the individual come to about 30 degrees of a straight leg raise in a supine position. From here, you're gonna ask the individual to hold this position and remove your hand. If no pain is elicited at this point, you're then going to provide a downward pressure, preferably taking advantage of the long lever arm. So typically when we provide pressure, we do so not crossing multiple joints. However, for this, we're actually going to be closer to the foot and ankle because we want to take advantage of the long lever arm and we want to see if there's any pain reproduced with that. If there is, we need to know where that pain is and also the quality and quantity. So we're going to have a conversation then with our patient. What this helps with is to first identify if there's an intraarticular pathology, say a loose body or labral pathology. But additionally, it can help to differentiate between lumbosacral pain because we have this really, really long lever arm. If they're complaining of pain that's isolated to the hip, it is highly unlikely then that the pain or, or pathology would be related to lumbosacral spine. However, if with this long lever arm, you're almost arching their back, that can be something then that we need to go back and screen above the hip, looking then at the lumbosacral spine. So have a go with these two tests. Again, the first test is our log roll test, a test for ligamentous laxity or hypermobility. And our second test is the resistive straight leg raise for the Stinchfields test. Have a go with the pure colleague and let me know if there's any questions.